Hello, everybody. Welcome to your daily five. I am Jane Galena, also known as Airplane Jane. And if you don't already know about me, you can pretty much follow me everywhere. I am on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Have my website at cjanetrade.com, also on Ticker Talker, and I do also teach at thedarkpools.com. But let's go ahead and get into my daily five for today. So first off, we did have SHOP going ahead and announcing earnings. Now, a year ago, I did host my annual summit, the Modern Trader Summit, and we were throwing out our long picks for the year, and SHOP was my long pick. Why? Well, in Canada, there are not that many tech stocks that are in Canada, right? Shopify is pretty much the only one. So when people are looking to invest in the longer term and the tech world is growing exponentially, they're going to look at Shopify. They can put it in their RRSPs, which is their retirement account in Canada, and they can go ahead and hold it longer term. Another great reason why this is such an amazing longer term pick, in my opinion, is because this is kind of like Amazon and Baba put together. This is where people can go, they can go ahead and build their own store, which is going to create revenue for themselves. And Shopify is going to take a portion of that as well as a monthly fee that's going into Shopify's pocket. So now that the world has gone so online, especially with COVID, that this one is just rocking. Again, you can see it went from 305 back at the bottom of the market back the end of March, all the way up now to 1100. In fact, right at the moment, we're at 1092. So if this one goes ahead and breaks 1110, I think we're going to see this up in, you know, that same range such as Google, because this is going to be that new online marketplace where a lot of people are going to go ahead and start their stores to go ahead and create revenue. This is where those entrepreneurs to work online can very easily open up a store in about 15 minutes. Next one is going to be silver. You know, the silver and metal sector right now is very hot. A couple of reasons. We have the seasonality that's going on with silver, and we also have the recession that is happening. Now, when you look back, let's go to our next chart. I did Put it on a hourly chart here. We are breaking out. And then I went ahead and I pulled it out for a longer time frame for you guys on a weekly chart. Now, if I'd gone back even further, put in 2008, you would have seen that silver went from eight all the way up to $48. Now, what was going on at the time economically? Well, that's when we had the big recession that was happening during 2008 to 2011. What happens to the US dollar when the government is printing money? It's going to be devalued. Many times people are going to turn to metals and commodities for a constant as an investment. What happens if the dollar disappears because all of a sudden the Fed's printing all this money for these stimulus uh, checks that are going out? They're buying all these federally backed securities to the tune of you know, $500 billion dollars where is all this money coming from? And it's being printed. What happens when you guys have a secondary offering to a float, right? Well, the market cap stays the same. However, the value per share is going to drop. That, in essence, is likely going to be what happens to the U.S. dollar with all of these dollars that are being printed. So many people are turning to metals Silver is fairly undervalued. Gold, you've seen hitting new highs this week lately. Silver is on its way up as well. And silver also has super stubborn shorts. I'm telling you, 73% short volume over the past 50 days, which is kind of like what happened to Tesla when it went from 300 all the way up to 1,000. So definitely keeping silver on watch. These shorts keep piling into it. And I think the next level, you can see we're right roughly at 2240 today, that the next level up from here is going to be roughly 24, 25. Then we might be testing that 28 mark sooner than later. Again, 
it could very easily go all the way back up to 48 again, but that took three years last time. So how quickly is this market going to go ahead and take those shorts and create a short squeeze for them? Short squeeze is basically the theme of today. Today, we also had Kodak, massive short squeeze. Everyone in our trading rooms, like, what's going on with Kodak? What's going on? Well, Kodak has 18 million in the float. Yes, Trump gave them all this money to go into the drug production, basically say, we're going to take all of your tools and we're going to turn it into drug production now instead of film. Fuji Film as well is also doing the same thing, working hand in hand with Novavax. And what's happened is on, let's see, today is Wednesday. On Monday, Kodak hit the 200 simple moving average on the daily chart all of these shorts piled in. There was a lot of action and all of these shorts went ahead and piled into it. Well then yesterday, Tuesday, we opened up at about $7 and then it closed, it went up and hit 11 and pulled back. Now, today we had another squeeze and those sh stubborn shorts kept getting into it, squeezed it all the way up to $60. Now, right now, I think it's had about six halts today. And right now it's roughly at $34. So please be careful with the low float momentum stocks. They are great when you're on the right side of the trade. However, for those people that bought at 60 and now it's dropped down roughly 50%. Ouch, right? So just be very careful with that. But low float squeezes are the theme. So our next one that we're looking at is going to be XRT. I do have this on a weekly chart. XRT as well has had some pretty stubborn shorts, right? It's much like Tesla. The fundamentals of Tesla, everybody was saying, you know what? This stock is so high in debt, they're not proving a profit yet. This just has to go bankrupt. Well, Musk had, did his fair share of not being able to tweet, but leaking employee emails, in my opinion. Those were his leaks. Well, XRT much like Tesla that had the fundamentals that look like it should be dropping. However, XRT has had all of these shorts piling in. And what is this chart saying? The chart is giving us a completely different story than potentially the fundamentals of the retail world, right? So XRT is in essence squeezing all of these shorts. And I did mention short volumes. So short volumes here does have all of this, I mean, look at this, 20 days ago, almost 80% of the volume per day was short. Like, that's just crazy. What are these people looking at? If we go back to that chart. Does this chart look like a chart that tells you that it's going to go ahead and drop? I mean, that looks pretty bullish to me. We're almost testing the highs. We could very easily go up to $50, even higher, 52, or even squeeze it even higher. I see a nice little cup and handle chart on our weekly chart. So these people, in my opinion, need to actually look at the chart, right? This is those shorts that is longs, congratulations, loving it to the long side until it proves itself otherwise, right? This chart and this ETF, in my opinion, are gonna keep going up until it proves itself otherwise. Same with silver. Kodak has already proved itself that it's not going to continue that trend for now. Last one for today, is going to be XOM. We do have earnings coming up. We had a large drop in oil in relation to COVID. Everybody was at home, right? And we just have oil numbers that just came out. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick glance on XOM and see. So right now we're pretty much at the same area, or right at 43.50, haven't done a lot of movement. We do have earnings that are coming up on Thursday, which is going to be a crazy day. Excuse me, on Friday is the earnings for Exxon. Tomorrow, Thursday is going to be crazy with some big name majors that are announcing earnings. So please trade cautiously and keep Exxon Mobil for watch. I will let you in on the fact we did have dark pool prints on this one. So there is going to be a big move. Once that move is initiated, it will likely move for quite a while. There are always people that know something before earnings goes out and we see the prints before the moves happen. 
So when that happens, we're prepared. We could potentially strangle or we just follow their coattails. When you have somebody with billions of dollars in a trade, it's very easy to profit when you follow them. If you guys wanna learn more about the dark pools, please feel free to come over and join us at the training pit, which is at thedarkpools.com. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you had a great time watching My Daily Five. And please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Jane at cjanetrade.com. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.